with your CID TV news brief, community headlines, and weather forecasts. I'm Donna Bush. It's been more than 48 hours since fire crews and DEH staff have been working to bring a major fire at the Georgetown landfill under control, and they remain on the site this evening. Early Tuesday morning, both the north and southbound lanes on the Esterly Tibbetts Highway remained open, alleviating the traffic gridlock seen on Monday. Motorists are being advised to stay vigilant while on the stretch of highway between the Butterfield Roundabout and Kimana Bay, reduce their driving speed, and of course keep their vehicle windows closed. Now the aim of crews is to reduce the amount of visible smoke in the area and lessen its impact to local residents. DEH continues to excavate, excavate the site, allowing fire officers to dampen down the area and of course reduce smoke and more favorable weather conditions today uh, aided fire officers' efforts in that regard. Now several operational meetings were held throughout the day where decisions were made whether uh, residents of Lakeside Apartments and Watler Road who were evacuated could return to their homes, commenting on the volume of food donations and well wishes offered to crews. Chief Fire Officer Paul Walker said, quote, everyone at the fire service is overwhelmed by the level of public support and generosity shown to our crews during protracted and challenging incidents such as this. It really means a lot that the community is behind us. This is Cayman kind at its best, end quote. Now, persons who are experiencing any problems with uh, irrit or irritation with difficulty breathing should contact their health care professional or seek help from the accident and emergency department at the health services. Authority, And of course, for more on the fire, uh, you can go online to the Cayman Islands government Facebook page for regular updates. And as local health officials wait on lab results from CARFA on five suspected cases of COVID-19 or coronavirus, Deputy Commissioner of Police Mr. Anthony Ennis says the RCIPS is in preparation mode. We are preparing our staff, which is the first thing we had to do. So we uh, raised their awareness, making sure that we have uh, protective, such as hand sanitizers, you know, talking about hygiene, making sure vehicles are decontaminated, different things like that. So we have raised the awareness of our staff in preparing them for what might come. In terms of, say, for example, if we reach the level whereby we have a coronavirus case, and we reach a uh, national emergency, so to speak. Uh, we're looking at things of how we might have to redeploy our staff and also business continuity and contingencies because we have to also be prepared in case any of our staff are affected by this virus and staff who might have come in contact with other staff members to make sure that if we have to put them into isolation and how we can continue business. So we're going through those, testing those plans and I'm pretty confident that we'll be ready, prepared and ready uh, to serve the community and uh, meet the demands that might be presented to us. And I do appreciate, uh, you know, not only as a police officer, but as a citizen, the anxiety and, and fear, increasing fear in the community regarding this uh, unknown, so to speak, even though we know that's the virus, and, but it's something that probably our country has never been confronted with at this magnitude, this, you know, what's happening in the global community and how it's going to even impact uh, not just our way of life, but the economy and other things. And I just want to say as a citizen that I do understand the fears and anxiety, but I want to reassure our citizens that as part of the national response that I'm pretty confident that the government and the, re the agencies that are responsible for responding to this are doing everything in, within our powers and ability to be as prepared and ready as possible. Now, for details on COVID-19 or coronavirus, you're encouraged to go online to the Health Services Authority's website. That is hsa.ky. Meantime, 25 young people spent months preparing for Monday's youth parliament session in the Legislative Assembly. The proceedings are part of Commonwealth Day and the 16 girls and 9 boys representing public and private high schools on Grand Cayman and Cayman Brack include, and also included UCCI and the Cayman Islands Further Education Center. Now the students uh, prepared for the long day session by learning the ins and outs of all aspects of the LA and getting expert lectures from opposition leader the Honorable Arden McLean, MLA Mr. Ezard Miller, as well as Legislative Assembly Council, Ms. Cheryl Neblett. Now, the youth parliamentarians learned about the various roles they played during youth parliament, including the duties of people like the clerk, uh, the sergeant at arms, and the Speaker of the House. 
and they received assistance from members of the Youth Parliament Organizing Committee. They also learned about house business, such as government motions and private members' motions. The group was given tips and exercises for honing the all-important debating skills from representatives from the local Toastmasters Club who were involved with the training of the youth parliamentarians for the first time, along with representatives of the Truman Bodden Law School and the Cayman Islands Youth Assembly. The students debated the subjects of should the age to vote be brought down to 16 and should the use of e-cigarettes be regulated in the Cayman Islands. And you can watch Youth Parliament in its entirety right here on CIG Television and our YouTube channel starting on Saturday night. Now for a check on other community stories making Radio Cayman headlines today. School inspections are, in, inspectors rather, are impressed with improvements at the Cayman Islands Further Education Center or SIFECT, given it a satisfactory rating. The Office of Education Standards reports that most of the quality in indicators were judged at least satisfactory with a number graded as good at SIFECT during a recent inspection. The report says in science, students made good progress in their learning. They behaved well at SciFact and showed respect to one another and their teachers. They have a good knowledge and understanding of both their civic and their environmental responsibilities. Their curriculum was good. In addition to students being able to improve their grades in English and mathematics, they were given a wide choice of vocational courses at both level one and two from which to choose. Finally, the report says only two weak judgments, which were for attainment and progress in mathematics. The school was fully aware of this and had already identified this as an improvement priority. Now for these and other Radio Cayman stories, of course, we invite you to go online to radiocayman.gov.ky. Turning now for a look at our weather forecast from the Cayman Islands National Weather Service. Fresh easterly winds and rough seas will continue across the Cayman area for the next 24 hours. It's in association with a high pressure system over the Western Atlantic Ocean. Radar images show isolated showers in and around our area. They're moving towards the west. Today's high temp reached 83 degrees, the low 73. Partly cloudy skies with a 20% chance of showers. Winds are from the east to northeast at 15 to 20 knots. Sea conditions are rough with wave heights of 5 to 7 feet. A small craft warning remains in effect. Now for more on local weather, you can go online to weather.gov.ky uh, for the latest there, or you can download their app, C-I-N-W-S. And that ends today's news brief here on CIG Television. If you missed it, you're invited to go to the Cayman Islands Government Facebook page as well as the CIG Television YouTube channel. I'm Donna Bush, wishing you a safe and, of course, a wonderful night.